Welcome back to We Will Rock You here at the uh, Dominion Theatre in London with the star of the show. He is Galileo. The ladies want to sleep with him. <laughs> the men want to applaud him. He has the voice of an angel. <laughs> Noel, how are you? Ah, oh, that was <laughs> quite an introduction. Thanks, mate. Uh, that was that was such an amazing night. I, I don't Listen, really know what to say. If I could be you for just one minute, I have never had that adoration in my life, and I'm not likely to. How did that feel at the end? You've got 3,000 people cheering you. You've got De Niro looking on. You've got Brian May looking on. And the audience just loving you. It was, uh, it was one of the highlights of my life. I'm not going to lie. Uh, that sounds quite dramatic. Um, but yeah, there were some amazing people watching. There were some amazing people on the stage. You know, Roger Taylor was <laughs> on drums. Brian May was on guitar. You don't get you don't get a lineup like that. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And I can't see this ever happening again because the truth is the number they did right at the end has never been done before. It's not in the show. It was done specially for tonight. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it definitely was a, a once in a lifetime experience, especially for us. Like, anyway, because if We Will Rock You goes on for another ten years, then we're all going to be too old to rock out like we did tonight. <laughs> I see it like I've got Da Vinci in front of me and I'm trying to paint. How does it feel when you're stood next to Brian May, Roger's behind you on drums, and you've got to sing and knock it out of the park? It makes me feel like, uh, ah, that, that, that's where I belong. <laughs> I last interviewed you in Greece. Before that, I interviewed you here in Hearsay. And frankly, in those days, you were rubbish. Tonight, you were just fantastic and everybody loved you. No, no, I'm being serious. I never liked you until tonight, until you proved you could actually sing. Well, well, I've just never been given the chance I could always sing. But isn't that the truth? You're only as good as your material. I mean, a lot of the songs in here say you couldn't distinguish one voice from the next. No, absolutely. But then, you know, it's ironic, really, that the show that I'm in at the moment berates the very creation that I came from, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I'm, glad, I'm glad to be able to look back 10 years on. Ironically, 10 years ago was when Hearsay started, and uh, 10 years ago was when I started on my path to get to where I'm at at the moment. So it's just kind of a sweet, uh, a sweet night for me, all in Can all. Can I really be honest with you about one thing? And you're, you're looking at an ugly ginger guy here who's never had popularity. But there was a while where people were taking the mickey out of you. You were even referenced in Peter Kay's thing. You're now credible, you're relevant, you're amazing, you've got the great voice. Is this some affirmation for you that all those years has been building up to the point where you can stand there and sing Bohemian Rhapsody in front of 3,000 people eight times a week and people go, oh my God, he can sing, he can act, he can dance, and he looks good for the girls? Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I totally believe that, you know, I was, I was thrown on the scrap heap when I was 21 and, um, and nobody pulled me off that apart from my family and myself. And um, it has been a horrifically difficult journey to get to this point but it does make it all the more brilliant when I stand there and I know that nobody has done this for me. I haven't sold out, I haven't done anything that I shouldn't have done. I've done what I want to do, do from the start and, and it doesn't get better than that. The last time we spoke, we were in some closet at Greece at the Piccadilly Theatre. I mean, it's a nice show, but it, again, never let you shine like this material. Yeah, I know, but you need to take steps. It's, it's step by step, you know, and now, with it tonight for me it was I had everybody who mattered in musical theatre right in front of me and I showed them what I could do so let's hope for a um, fantastic next 10 years you know God bless you because the songs in this I think are a bit like ABBA songs they're over about 27 octaves they go all over the place and it's it's a workout isn't it to get through these songs yeah definitely and you know what show opens with I want to break free and then ends with three of the, the the most momentous songs in rock we will rock you bohemian rhapsody and we are the champions to sing those back to back yeah it's definitely a feat that not everybody can do so i am i'm grateful to be get for for the opportunity to be able to do it and i'm grateful that i still have a larynx to be able to do it with and you sound perfect how do you feel physically after that workout knackered <laughs> really yeah so what yeah. would happen on a saturday you've done it at 2 30 and again at eight o'clock I mean, how do you get through that? Well, it's just about timings and, f and, and making sure that you eat at the right time. As soon as the curtain comes down on the first show, you, you ram a load of food in and, and rest yourself ready for the next one. Um, but yeah, it's just about finding a, a balance, really, uh, because you, you do have to, you, you save yourself for the evenings. You save yourself for six o'clock for warming up and getting into that kind of show mode. So I'm useless, for, I'm useless to the world in the daytime. I, I, I'm, I kind of barely manage to put my washing in the machine. So it, it's, it's, it, um, it is really draining, but ultimately massively rewarding. So it's a sacrifice that you, that, that you have. That to final do. feeling, there you are stood on stage. You've just done bow rap. You're in that Freddie Mercury pose. You've got everybody waving those colored things at you. I know that doesn't happen every night. 
What is that feeling like? Can you somehow sum up how you felt this evening at about five past ten? Um, full. Yeah, you feel full. At, a lot of the time, I think performers are very insecure creatures, and you and you and your head's always going, "What am I doing? What's next? What's you know? Am I doing the right thing? All of that stuff." In moments like that, there is nothing else apart from that moment, and that's why you do it, I suppose. And God bless your confidence, because to stand there in front of all of those stars tonight, I mean, everybody was in, from Chris Tarrant to De Niro, of course, the creators of Queen. I don't want to make you nervous now, it doesn't matter, but I mean... Lisa Scott Lee. Yeah, exactly. I think I saw, I saw Sue Pollard earlier. Um, how do you cope with that when you're stood in the wings thinking, in five minutes, I've got to come on and sing I Want to Break Free? I'm not going to lie, it was one of the most intense shows I've ever done, but that... Yeah, you know, it's that fight or flight, isn't it? And t tonight we just had to go out and fight, and it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And what about me? It's all about me. When you knew I was in the audience this evening, did that give you an extra kick to make it so wonderful? It really did. It really did. <laughs> no, I, I can't say enough good things about your performance this evening. There were a lot of performers who could knock it out of the park, but with that audience would have lost it, and you kept your composure. You never looked out of control, and God bless you for that, because that's really tough. And this crowd was not easy this evening because they know the jokes because we've all seen it 500 times. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you and pleased for you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you.